Hey guys, good morning. It's January 20th, 2021, and I'm super excited today to show you some more stuff for Be Mine Sew Along, which is going to be in February, or rather Stitch Along, which will be in February, where I'm going to be stitching all kinds of Valentine's Day stuff. So today I'm going to kind of show you what we've worked on in the past, like what me, Denise, Cheryl have done, some of Priscilla's stuff, some of Lori's stuff, um, just to inspire you to come up with whatever you would like to do in the Be Mine Stitch Along. And of course, you can stitch as much as you want or as little as you want. There's no rules, just have fun. So for the Stitch Along, we did do this little chart right here. You can download that for free. So if you wanted to kind of schedule what you're going to stitch, you can do that. That might make it easier for you. It's free on Fat Quarter Shop. And then this is kind of mine so that I can have this and maybe check off as I go. So I will be stitching a little bit of about 10 different projects throughout February. I did try to divide it up to where there's um, some of the things are repeated so that I can actually finish them. And one of the reasons I'm doing Valentine's Day in February is because I know I'm not gonna like finish, finish it. Like, so I'll just stitch this year for next year, etc. So the first thing I wanted to show you was from last year. Last year, and we have a couple of these to show you. This one is Heart in Hand 2020 Collector's Heart. And I stitched this in February of last year. And I stitched on 28 count wheat by Zweigart. The number is 3270-779. And I did use this fabric for a couple of other pieces. I bought a really big piece and then used it for a couple of things. Now Priscilla finished this on a plain board from Hobby Lobby. The number is 427781, and she painted this with Lori's chalky, chalky white paint. And I'm gonna fluff the bows. So that's my first one from last year. And with the pattern, the button came with it. And I actually don't even remember putting that button on, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> from the same designer and the same fabric, I'm just gonna put it right here, since they go together. This was a free pattern called Always by Heart and Hand. I also did this last year and I used the same fabric and I just carried the, I used the called for floss here and used my leftovers over here so that I didn't have to buy anything else. This was a free pattern by Heart and Hand if you signed up for her newsletter in 2020. Um, so that's where you would find that. And we just, this frame is just from Hobby Lobby, but it's discontinued, but it's just a little vintage frame where Priscilla put um, some essential dot fabric and some B. Lori natural lace right there. And then she ruffled some of the lace. So those two kind of go together in my house and it's like an easy, you can just put two together. And this is always a great way to do something small with your leftover floss, because then you don't have to think of the colors, which is always nice. So I get to take these home and decorate them. The next one is Let Love Bloom. This is a Country Cottage Needleworks pattern. And I stitched this in December of 2019, so a little bit more than a year ago. And I used um, DMC from the pattern and I got the farmhouse 10 count vintage cloth from Lori Holt and I stitched on it. So I did do six strands here. You could do four, it's very chunky. And the reason I did six strands is I just wanted it to be very like, very chunky. So um, I did six strands here, you could do four. And we did a video and the video is called how to turn cross stitch into a pillow. And we, this is Riley Blake fabric. This is Lori Holt vintage trim. And then these are just buttons from just another button company. And you can see this little button is coming off. And the reason why is my kids throw this pillow. So this pillow actually, they're all coming off. Oh my goodness, my kids are gonna have to sew them back. So when I did the pillow, I did an envelope back. So I can take the pillow out and then I'll just have to re-secure these buttons that are now falling off because my kids like to hit each other with it but that's okay. 
So this again is Country Cottage Needleworks Let Love Bloom. And um, I actually leave this out through spring. I don't put it up at the end of Valentine's Day. The next one is Quilty Love by Lori Holt. This is one of her first cross stitch patterns that we did. And on this one, I stitched on oatmeal 10 count vintage cloth. So this is that same 10 count, it's just a different color and it gives you that chunky feel. Now on this one, I only use four count, four strands. So I can show you the difference between using four strands and six strands. So you can see my stitches here are very neat, kind of, and here they're very chunky. So you can see the difference of what four and six will do, but I wanted this to have that kind of chunky homemade look kind of thing. I don't know how to describe it, but I wanted it to look like that and I wanted this to look more like a picture. And then this frame we do sell, it's sold out right now, it's called the Lucy frame. And um, we do have more on order, but this is one of Lori's uh, first cross stitch patterns. And you can do something else with it is when I was done, I also had this little frame in my office and we do have this one in stock. It's Lori Holt's small vintage square frame. And last year after I had done this, I just went ahead and picked one of the um, large motifs, put some small hearts and then some big hearts just to make it fit. And this piece has glass on it and this one does not because I had this one professionally framed and this one we just framed here and we just put um, some fabric on the back of sticky board and made it pretty stiff and then just kind of stuck it in here so it won't fall out. It's not glued in or anything. It's just kind of, if you make this pretty um, taut, then it will stick in there. So that is another February and then in my house, these two will go together in kind of the same spot. And this was really fun. This was the large vintage trim and it was stitched with Aura Floss. Can you zoom in and see? Yeah. And it kind of secures the rickrack and it gives it that really pretty look. Some people were nervous and just did back stitches instead, but that's a really unique thing that we did, that Lori did. And these buttons are, um, from the cute little buttons bag. So it's on the back of the pattern is what Denise is telling me. And the good thing about this pattern is you could make it patriotic if you wanted to, like you could do red and white and blue if you're from America, um, but you could use these quilt blocks and lots of things. So this one is one of my favorites. So that is Lori Holt. The next one I've probably shown you guys like 10 times, but it is one of my favorites. So when I got back into cross stitching, one of the things that I started with was the Country Cottage Needleworks Cottage of the Month. This is February. And like I said, on January and February, I used 16 count lamb's wool. I was supposed to use 14 count. I don't know what I was doing. So some of them have 16 <laughs> count, some have 14 count. But if it was 14 count, it would fit the frame a lot better. I used um, just the called for DMC and the pattern will be in stock in a week or two. They're behind on shipping at, at uh, Country Cottage Needlework. So she said she'll ship it next week. So I have one more Valentine to show you that's from me. And it is one of our low priced PDFs. It's just called Made With Love and it's so cute. Mm. So it actually was featured in our very first Sew Sampler box, I believe. And um, I stitched this with just Cosmo. This is a Cosmo Lucian frame. It's no longer available, but it came just like that. And then I just put the, I put, I just literally put tape. Like, what do you call that tape? Scotch tape. Scotch tape and just taped it down. Now I know you're not supposed to do that, <laughs> but it's lasted for about three or four years. Mm -hmm. And so, so what you should do is put some fabric back here on a sticky board, make it pretty, cover it up, but nobody sees it. So mm -hmm. that is my Valentine. So let's take questions on that. Mm -hmm. 
before I go on to Cheryl and Denise's so that I don't confuse anybody's because some of mine have been duplicated with Cheryl's. From Wilma Evans, on the pillow, did you use six strands, six strands on the whole thing? Yes. And then we had a funny comment from Jennifer's Projects. Jennifer says, my husband said Fat Quarter Shop should put a piece of candy with each package so that all husbands feel included in getting something. <laughs> LOL, I told him he would get fat with all the packages I buy. <laughs> Oh, funny. Jennifer. And then we had a super chat from Valeria Bauer for 19.99, And Valeria put a little dancing pair that says, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valeria. All right. And I did want to remind you, if you watched last week, I went over all of what I'm working on in February, and this is one of them. And very excited about it. We've gotten a lot of really good feedback, which really makes us feel good. So that's exciting. And I'm excited to get mine done. Um, so next, I'm going to show you some of the pieces that Cheryl has done for Valentine's Day. And the first one is the same one that I did. Ooh. And I can show you it compared to mine. Now, hers is stitched on the fabric that came in the pattern. So in the pattern, when you buy the pattern, this comes with the pattern. And if the pattern is sold out, we'll be getting more. She's also behind on shipping. So Cheryl got the pattern and the buttons, and she put the small buttons go on this one, and then the big button goes here and the small button. And this is mine. So when I stitched mine, mine was on a different count. Let's see, it was on 28 count, and this is the fabric in the pattern, which is probably like a 30, 32. And we did use the same floss colors. I just didn't make this piece. And there's the small buttons are here. Oops, and here. And so she made that last year. So that's like a duplicate. And then the next one that she made last year is by Little Stitch Girl. It's called Loads of Love. Mm -hmm. Cheryl stitched it on gray check, 32 count Lugana, and she used the called for fancy floss. So, super cute. The next one that Cheryl did last year was Valentine Bird. It is from Hard and Hand, the same designer, and you can see what she stitched on. She used on fabric flare. That's one of the things I do like about fabric flare is they print what it is so you don't have to think about it. And um, it's 32 count. And she used the called for colors. And it did come with the little, it didn't come with this button. The button's available separately and it's just another button company. And it adds, I mean, having these little buttons really adds texture. It's just, if you were gonna get this framed, you would have to pay to have, um, they call them lifts or something like that, put in your frame mm -hmm. so the glass doesn't smush it down. I don't remember what it's called, but one time I had to pay for that. Spacers? Spacers, ha ha, like braces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. So the next one she stitched is also hard in hand, Love Whirly Gig, and she stitched on 32 count Lugana Vintage Country Mocha, and she did use the called four colors. The next one was something that we bought early last year, and the packs that we have include two patterns per month and the, the thread. Once these packs are gone, they will not be making them again. They're just going to sell the patterns without the floss. So um, Cheryl made this one. It's um, February. Sampler of the month. So it's kind of confusing because it has the same name as the new Country Cottage Needlework Sampler of the month. Same name, different companies. It is a mom and daughter. So it is kind of confusing on our website. Um, and she stitched it on 32 count Lugana Vintage Country Mocha. So pretty. And I think she did January also. Another thing that we did last year that was super fun is we had this chart made. Yeah. It's completely free. You can get it at Fat Quarter Shop. And Cheryl made two of the little Aww. hearts. 
and we give you different colors um yellow green blue purple pink you could do a long vertical you could do a, or actually horizontal you could do a horizontal piece you could do vertical you could do three by three there's a lot you can do with it but we just wanted to kind of show those now with this denise has two more of these because we did four as samples. So Denise made this one. And she got these little heart hangers this week at Hobby Lobby. The number is 581-9610. And so we just got these this week. You could add a bow or you could leave it just like this, but we thought they fit perfectly. So those are the four that we had. And of course, this is free, so super fun. The next one that she did is called Love Birds by Country Cottage Needleworks. And this one was also on 10 count. So this is the color Farmhouse 10 count. She used called for DMC, and this is a frame that we got at Michael's and you can find the item number below and this is a metallic Essex fabric called peony and this is trim that you can buy like at Joann's and Denise finished this one and when she stitched this one she used four strands so when you're stitching with 10 count you can do four or six and it's really up to what kind of look you're you're going for and i love the 10 count because you can make um, something small really big and it will give a like a bigger impact in your house and then the last valentine's day if we haven't shown you enough is the same one we showed you earlier from cheryl and it's called love whirly gig and denise stitched on 14 count oatmeal vintage cloth by lori holt with called for DMC and we got this paddle board at Hobby Lobby and if you look at Cheryl's Cheryl stitched on a much smaller count so it does give a different look and even this is DMC and this is fancy floss so and fancy floss what fancy floss means is hand dyed thread and it kind of encompasses all of the manufacturers that do hand dyed and, and Chelsea was stitching with the housewives came up with that term. So you can see different fabric, different threads, similar, but different. And this is a cute um, finishing idea. And if you want to know how to do like a round finishing, Priscilla did a tutorial for us on this channel. And this is the R Riley Red Vintage Trim. Mm -hmm. it looks so yummy. I want to eat it. What are you going to eat? The cross stitch, the other one. Well, they both look yummy, but that one looks like There's a pastry. There's no food on it. It looks like a pastry. Okay, she's going to eat hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so let me know if you'll have any questions on any of those, because I have Priscilla and Chelsea's to show you next. From Crafting a Planned Life, uh, they said, Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, on the six strands, do you do three strands and do the loop method, or do you do all six? I do the three and the loop. And especially if you're doing six strands, you don't want to have too long of a piece because that's just a lot of thread. And then we had a super chat from Dot Dot Goose Design Denise for $50. And Denise says, we love Kimberly and Fat Quarter Shop from me and Miss Gracie. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So now I'm going to move on and show you some different things that you might have already seen on Stitching with Housewives. They are by Priscilla and Chelsea, and they're so cute. And a lot of these I'm also stitching. So the very first one is Trucking Along February, and I will be stitching this during the Be Mine Stitch Along. I'm going to stitch mine as one piece and Priscilla and Chelsea stitched theirs as two pieces. They stitched on Monaco Black. Monaco Black is no longer made, but it is beautiful and that black really, really pops. And they used the Called For Classic Color Works and they got this bucket at Hobby Lobby. The number is 
1.93 and it is um, on magnets so you can take them switch it up yeah you can you can use it for march you know you can use it for all the months and this is also on magnets and this i'm not going to take it all off but three different magnet sex sets i love this one so yes i'm stitching this one the next one i'm also stitching in be mine this is called be my valentine so and it is so cute the pattern is available now it also is available on the other one on the february truck it's available as pad paper and pdf this one is available as paper it will be available as pdf later and on all of these finishes they are using the priscilla's pretty plaids and chelsea's checks so this is uh, priscilla's pretty plaids red and white this is black and white we have that in stock and this is the Lori Holt vintage trim. Now this came from, a, this is a chalkboard sign from Walmart. And this is just a bow from her stash. And it's so pretty. I really like how when I look at hers in person, hers pop more than mine because of this really, really dark black. So this is the second one from them. The next one is called Be Mine. And they actually have something to go with this that came out this morning. So they have this Be Mine piece that's larger with the chickens. And this morning they came out with another Be Mine that is more of an ornament, you know, smaller size. And again, this is 28 count. This they took Monaco and they writ dyed it with evening blue and then dunked it in tea. Um, mm -hmm. And of course they used the called for classic color works. This is an enamel sign um, from Walmart. Oh. So they took whatever was on here and just put this on top. And this is Chelsea's checks, which are coming out in February. And if you want to pre-order it, you can pre-order it at Backorder Shop. Ooh. The next one is a cup from What's in My Cup series. And this is so cute. Okay, Lily's gonna love it. Ooh, ooh so cute oh my goodness so this makes me want to make this one i don't usually do the cups uh -huh. just because i don't collect the radon cups mm -hmm. but this is so cute mm -hmm. this is a layla may designs box and um, they have a facebook group and sometimes they sell some wood pieces on there and um, chelsea stitched this one on 28 count monaco black i wish they would bring that monaco back because so many people would buy it so cute and then um the back stitches that they do are not they're not back stitches they're long stitches and they kind of talked about it in one of their videos but you can see it's a full stitch mm. like a full so it has kind of that chunky look rather than individual tiny stitches the next one is calvin calvin has been um he has been um kidnapped oh it's a joke Oh, <laughs> so yeah, so so Calvin uh, had to go live with her. Calvin belongs to her son Hunter, and That's Hunter right. moved out. And then Hunter, um, so Chelsea, so Priscilla and Chelsea have to go visit the cat. <laughs> so this is XOXO. What's in my cup? And you can see that if you compare the what's in my cup, they're mm. similar sizes, yeah. but you get a totally different look. Mm -hmm. They don't even look the same size, but they are. And this is Chelsea's checks right here mixed with Priscilla's plaids. Mm. And then, and of course they have more than this, but this is um, what we borrowed. The next one I am going to be stitching in Be Mine, and it is called Delivering Roses. And this is a PDF only. And again, it's stitched on 28 count, writ dyed with evening blue. So sometimes they use evening blue and then sometimes they use an aqua. The evening blue is a little bit darker. And she did a video on how to make this ornament. So when you look at it, this top piece is using Chelsea's checks, but it's um, on a sticky board. When you turn it over, this back piece is a separate sticky board. 
glue, she glued them together and then added the rickrack here and here to hide the seam. But mm. Priscilla and Chelsea have a video on how to do it. And so they can do a Valentine's Day tree Ooh. or Valentine's tree. So that is my lineup of Valentine's stuff for today. If that's not enough to get you inspired to do Valentine's Day, I don't know what else I could do. <laughs> I know, I feel inspired. Question from Katrina E. What cloth would you recommend 14 or 28 count for Be Mine? Oh, well, you could do either. They're the same exact, but I always stitch on 14 counts. So I would do 14 count chalkboard black by Witchell. And if you look at my pieces, they come out um, more chalkboardy because they're less black less of a strong black but of course if you like 28 count you could do 28 count chalkboard black mm -hmm. i just prefer ada and do we have anything in that that might match their blue how they dyed it uh the only thing is aqua dyed effect by fabric flare but that will be a little bit brighter and doesn't have that brown tone so if you wanted it to have can i see it so here i can use this one so this one right here this is they dyed this fabric in writ dye evening blue they have a video on how to do it so that's that color but you can see right here like in the corner you can kind of see the brown that's tea stained so if you bought the aqua dyed effect it would be aqua but it would definitely not have any of this aqua i mean any of this tea stain but you could dunk it and one of the things that Priscilla and Chelsea do to save money is they used to buy the Monaco by the Bolt when it was available by the Bolt at Joann's. They no longer mm -hmm. offer that. And they would dye whatever they want to save money so they don't spend a ton of money on the fabric. They can do more projects that way. Mm -hmm. And they have videos on how to writ dye and also videos on how to tea dye. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do either. And I think if I did either one, I'd probably have heart attack. Um, because I am, <laughs> I don't like messes. And from Michelle Hardy, where are those felt flowers from? Oh, I have no idea. Michael's, Joanne's, or Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. uh, Priscilla and Chelsea can comment, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I know they've been getting a lot more at Walmart lately. And from Angela Stoudinger, how do you do the loop method with three stand strands? You can't. So you can only do the loop method with an even number. So two, four, six, you cannot do it with the three strands. So I don't ever do three strands. Um, she might also be asking, since we talked about using the six, six strands, but how oh. you use three to do the loop method. Okay, so you would take three strands and go like this. And at the bottom you have a loop you thread up here and then the three strands over here and the three strands over here become six and then you loop it through and i have done a video on the loop method and we could also like we could during stitchy talk next february if you ask during that i can actually demonstrate it yeah. all right and from janet catholic any suggestions on a good color ada 14 count for the winter rose manor pattern okay we're gonna look up that pattern that is a blackbird pattern uh, off the top of my head I would think oh it's kind of a grayish it's not brown it's not gray you know what would look good is that one right there this fabric which I can read you the SKU number Ooh. This would look really good, this fabric. It's a Zweigart, it's a 28 count, and it is 3270-779, and the color is wheat. And I love the look of this, but I will tell you this took me forever because it's not Ada. So that's why I'm kind of going back to just Ada because I don't have the time to do. But this is so pretty. Mm -hmm. But yes, that would look really good. Luckily, we have that because <laughs> it's not a gray. It's not a brown. And I don't know exactly what that pattern calls for, but um, it should be in the pattern. Okay. So when you said grayish, it was gray and beige? That's my that's my definition of gray and beige. So like, <laughs> make sure. OK, sorry. So grayish to me means gray plus beige. It's not gray. It's not beige. It's in between. 
like but that. I made that up. I like I, it. Maybe I didn't make that up. I think that's a thing. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I think that might be a thing. I don't know. And from Nita Pool, uh, Nita says the roses are from Walmart in the Valentine section. There you go. Thank you, Nita. So now we're going to move to kind of the stuff that I'm going to be doing, like sew alongs and just different monthly things. So the first thing that we are working on right now is the Sew by Row by Lori Holt. So I am stitching mine on 14 count shadow by Lori Holt um, on the pattern. What is called for is white 28 count cloud, 25 count cloud, which we can show you. Um, we'll kind of compare the two in person. And I'm stitching mine with DMC. The sample that I'm going to show you was stitched by Cheryl with DMC also. Thank you. So this is 25 count cloud white. So it's going to be bigger than mine. Mine will be smaller. Mine is, this is like a light gray. So it's not gray. It's not white. It's white gray. I just made that up. Sorry. Okay, right. um, I'm also using DMC. So this is a fun um, stitch along that we're in the middle of. I'm gonna show you um, a couple of things that I did that I got questions on. So when I went to Lori's in November, I stitched down this left side so that when I started 2021, I would just have to complete the rows and it would be more achievable. I am going to be doing all of the back stitch at the very end. So you can see there are back stitches here and there are long stitches on the pin cushions and I'm gonna do all of that at the end. Now, one of the questions that I did get is on the back, there's on each pin cushion, there's two little stitches. And one of the questions that I was getting was how did you do the pin stitch? But I didn't do the pin stitch. I did a stitch and then I pulled the thread back through the bottom of my previously stitched. So I stitched the bottoms, all the bottoms, then all the greens, and then I came back and did all of these and pulled it down here underneath. I did not do a pin stitch. Pin stitches are beautiful and um, Lori taught me how to do them, but they really don't look great on Ada and they're harder to do on Ada. And you don't need to do it here because you have something to pull the thread under with. Mm -hmm. And the same thing here on these little individual pieces, when you stitch this this week, you just pull your threads through the previous. Mm. And I try to do three or four stitches and clip right right at the edge. See, that drives me crazy how that little thing is up. I'll have to clip that. So we're on week three. And one thing that I was going to show you and talk about is on week three, a way to save time. So I went ahead and did the handle. What I will be doing this week is when I do this sewing machine, which ends up being this light blue, this is how I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to stitch all the way around this and stop. On the bottom, I'm going to stitch this dark blue all the way around. Not the inside, just all the way around. I'm going to stitch this all the way around. Then I'm going to do the white here. I'm going to do the white, um, just the outline. Then I'm going to come in and fill in all of this because I can do that while watching TV or without thinking or my boys now have basketball so I can finish it. I feel I have a funny story. I was going to text Denise and Priscilla and Chelsea, but I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. But we at basketball, there's this guy and he's super fit and he does yoga the whole time. So I'm like, he does yoga the whole time they're doing basketball and I'm stitching and I'm like, okay, these people probably think that we're crazy. <laughs> um, Cause I'm like stitching like crazy. And he's like doing like, when I say yoga, I mean real deal yoga, oh. like 
on a mat, everything. And I'm like, I wanted to take a picture to, just to be like, is that yoga or is that something else? But I think it's yoga. So I, the, I felt really weird because I watched him the whole time. Because <laughs> so I was like, oh, is that what yoga is? Anyway, sorry. So that's what I will do is I'll probably do all of that fill in. And maybe I could show a picture on Instagram or something or Facebook or Kimberly Stitchwater or something how I fill in. And so this is what we're working on this week. Now on, when we get to the very end, during our stitchy talk, which is the sec first Tuesday of every month, I can show you how I do these stitches, the back stitches, everything. And I'm not an expert on it. And anytime you're doing a piece, just always remember you don't have to do it the way I do it. You can do it any way you want. And with this one, I am using the beekeeper to keep all my floss and it's so pretty so I'm gonna put all this back and then I'm gonna give you some tips one thing that Lori wanted me to show you this week is when you're working with all of these little doodads they're like pins pinheads it's gonna take forever to needle to thread your needles so her suggestion to you guys is when you're working with something like this and like this week when you have all of these colors is to thread all of your needles at one time so what you could do is take this and you could thread if you had this for example you could thread it in the same exact order this is and then after you're done when you have leftovers you just put it back on here now this is called a floss prism and uh, this is Denise and Cody's idea. It's, you can make it super fast in about five minutes. And on this channel, we have a video on how to do it. It's, it's just simple supplies. Mm -hmm. So that is Lori's tip. And Lori's, I'm gonna show you where Lori's at on hers. So she is doing hers on this brand new vintage cloth called Prairie Cork. Prairie is the color, and cork is the type of fabric. It's not really cork, it's 100% cotton, but it's just the name of what it is. And so that's where she's at. And I think it's pretty cool how she does her floss flowers. So if you look on the left, you'll see her floss flowers. She does it more of like a star, whereas when you see my floss flowers, I do it different. So there's you know lots of different ways you can use any kind of product. Just like when you're stitching, you can do it however um, you like and her brand new uh, needle minders on the top right so she's all caught up hers is going to be much smaller and when she's done she will show how she finishes it so that if you do your similar you can um, finish it the same way she does if you're interested and this is how the cloth looks right here and last week I showed a little bit about how to use it. And thank you so much for nobody making fun of me for my mistakes that I made in that video because I was really worried about that. Oh. <laughs> so let me know if you have any questions on Sew by Row. Um, on that pattern, the PDF is now available. So if you're overseas or you prefer to buy things as a PDF, um, it's available in paper and PDF. And that design is by Lori Holt. It is based on a quilt design that she did that we are doing and bringing back as a block of the month. So if you're a quilter, you could make the quilt. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the quilt and the cross stitch and I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna try to put up a ladder and put the quilt over a ladder and then put the cross stitch right by it. That's what I'm gonna try to do, which means I'm gonna wait till coronavirus is over and Lori can come to my house and tell me what to buy and do. <laughs> Cause Lori's my styler. Ooh. I just do what Lori tells me. <laughs> Uh, oh, Lori Holt says the cork is 100% linen. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, and from Wilma Evans, what count is the cork linen? 20. So it's similar to 10 count. Or you could do either, t it's similar to Ada on 10 count or linen on 20. Or linen you can do 1 over 1 and that would be 40 count. So the next item that we're going to move to is my monthly markings. So, this is by Heart and Hand. And so there is a border pattern and then individual monthly patterns and you can buy it as a set. 
And so what we did here is we decided to color our own. And so here's mine. Cheryl stitched this and we showed it last week and Cheryl's was stitched on Venetian stone and 28 count linen. I'm stitching mine on Venetian sto stone 14 count Ada. And even though Venetian stone are both made by Witchell, the linen and the Ada do look slightly different. So you can look at that in last week's video or I could, sh I could show now. And my goal with this is, thank you. So you can see the difference. This is the Ada and this is the linen. They'll come out the same size, but they are a little bit different. Now, my goal on this is each month I'm gonna do, the first week I will do the aqua border, the second week I will do the inside, and the third week I will do the outer border. Now on this pattern, there are buttons if you made it this way. Now, we are not offering buttons just because I don't think it needs it. So I'm gonna give you an example. Right here, there's a little button. Can you zoom in right there? Mm -hmm. So right there, there's like a little yellow button, but it doesn't match our colors that we did with our Week Style Works. So you can see we just didn't put a button there. You can see on mine and on Cheryl's, we didn't put a button. So it looks totally fine without the button. So we are not going to have a button set. And I love our colors. We are using Weeks Dye Works. We will have more Weeks Dye Works sets in about three weeks. They are currently dying more for us. So this week I will have a break because on the fourth week, I don't have to do anything. But my first week of Be Mine, I'm gonna do the Aqua Border. And I will be following the border chart to know how many um, stitches away. So the border chart is just the border, not the insides but I'm really happy about how it's looking. And it looks like it took me about three hours to do all of that. So that's really quick and really easy. And I will have leftover from the leftover fabric that I'm using that I will use later in the year because it's we bought like a half yard and just cut it down. And I did leave about three inches around this time. Sometimes I do two, sometimes I do three. And I'm very happy with how that looks. And let's see, so I put that in this bag, which is the Gingham on the Go bag. And you can see, these are how the monthly, I'm gonna show you how I have it. So these are my floss bitties. And um, so on my floss bitties, I went ahead and just kind of moved them onto here. And they look so cute. So these are the um, regular floss bitties. They're not the Valentine Day ones, but I like them and they look great. And so I just, on the back side, I put the color usually on the back side, and then you can see the front. So these are my flosses and we did a thread pack. Like I said, we will have more soon. And in here, Denise has done a really good job of, this is the original that heart and hand had and then this is our colors and so as I did each color I checked it off and of course you can do any colors you would like and this is how they come monthly so um, as I do them I'll take them out of their plastic bags but I really I'm very happy with this um, it's sometimes nerve-wracking when we put together our own colors because what if it comes out bad then you're embarrassed <laughs> um, so super cute so that's my um heart and hand so let me know um what if you have any questions on that before i move to the next one mm -hmm. from jan damico was cheryl's frame a custom molding yes so cheryl's frame i took that to artworks in austin and she wanted it to not have a frame sorry she wanted it to not have glass she wanted, how much did we leave showing? I think we left about half inch showing around the edge. 
and I just found a frame. I basically just took about 10 frames. They have a bunch of frames on the wall and sent it to Cheryl and said, you know, kind of what style she was looking for. And um, I just know they will do a good job and they'll do it straight. So I, I had that done for her. Um, and I think it looks good. We, I, I kind of, when I was, when I had her piece laid out and you know, she could have done it too. I just did it. But when you lay it out, if you had a really thick frame, it just did not look good. So I went with a really thin frame and I love how it came out. I think it looks great. So I will probably use the same exact frame, except I will put glass on mine. From Freddie Gonzalez, how do you decide what size of Ada to, Ada to use slash cut for your project? So I like 14 count Ada, and I'm gonna kind of talk about that in the next segment, um, why I like 14 count versus 16 count. But what I do is I take, for example, trucking a long march just for example i write down the stitch count that is in the pattern i divide that by 14 and that gives me my stitch size and then you can either add two inches all the way around or three inches all the way around so i usually do two so here i would do i would cut an 11 by 11 and a half inch piece and that's why I like using this book because I can follow and see kind of what I did. And I usually put the SKU number so that if I wanna go back and buy the same exact fabric, like right now, obviously I will know, but if we go, we're in 2023, I'm not gonna remember what I did. So I do always try to put that SKU number so that if I forget. And from Paula Henderson, uh, Kimberly said there are no they are no longer making black Monaco what can we replace it with so there isn't uh so Priscilla and Chelsea's recommendation is Linda fabric which is I think spelled L I N D A and it comes with it it's a true black um it's 27 count so it is not 28 count but it's very close and that is the truest black that is out there. It's made by Zweigart and we sell a back quarter of it. The number is 1235-720. So that is like a true black if you want it to look like Priscilla and Chelsea's. Now that is not made in Ada. And we don't have like a black, black Ada. If you know of one, you can email Denise at backquartershop.com as you order it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take a break. And Lily is going to come and show you her monthly markings. Monthly markings. And I will be right back. Okay, don't, don't, here, I'll move this so you don't knock it over. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's funny. She has her coaster down here on the floor. <laughs> I had a notice. Hello, everyone. My name is Lily. Uh, oftentimes known as the voice behind the camera. Uh, let me fix my hair here a little bit. All right, so I'm going to show you my monthly markings today. And let me cut to hang on top camera. There we go. And put that over there. Uh, as you can see, I'm using my Socialites binder um, from Fat Quarter Shop. It's been really nice keeping everything in here. And what I've been doing to sort of, uh, since it's a small project to keep everything together, I've been using the inserts uh, from Lori Holt. I believe that we don't have them in stock right now, but they are uh, on order to come into us. And I just love them because they're so convenient. Uh, Cause like I said, you can fit a lot of little things in here. So it's been perfect for this. For my monthly markings, this is my January. And as you can see, I am doing them individually, different from Kimberly. I am also using uh, Breeze 14 Count, uh, which is a vintage cloth by Lori Holt. So it's like a light blue 14 count. And then I've decided to use pretty much exclusively gentle arts threads because I wanted to try a uh, fancy floss. And it's been really nice. I kind of did my conversion sort of willy nilly going back and forth from the website to all these different colors that are listed. So this is my little chart to know what I'm supposed to change things to. Um, so on this one, I'm just gonna read off what I changed. The Lancaster Red, which is his scarf, I changed to Claret. 
and the mascara, which is his eyes, huh, mascara, and his little uh, mouth is blackboard. And then I changed the whitewash, which is all the whitewash, which is all the snow, to chalk, and the gold leaf to brandy, which is the button, and moonlit path, which is the border. Uh, it was originally maple syrup. And nutmeg is missing because I still have to finish his nose, as you can see. Um, he's missing his nose right now. And you'll probably also notice for old blue paint, um, I replaced it with presidential blue. And my button is smaller than this button, which both buttons on the snowman are supposed to be the same. So <laughs> I made a mistake here. But then once I noticed it, I was like, you know, I kind of like that the other button's a different size. So I left it. Um, so now he has two different size buttons, so he's kind of unique in that sense, too. Uh, let's see, did I miss any color? Oh, his nose was the nutmeg, which I changed to tarnish gold. Um, and if, if you guys want that info written out somewhere, we can definitely share that. Um, and you'll also see, I tried the Pat's uh, 28 size needles, the Pat Carson ones, switched to 26, because as Kimberly pointed out, it's much easier. And I am keeping them in the little uh, magnetic needle case, uh, get to the point. And you'll see in here, I have the 26, the 28, and these are two random ones I have found in the film room. And I put them in here for safekeeping. And this is also a random one. So you can kind of see, it's nice seeing them next to each other because you can see the size difference. And then I kind of know what I'm picking out. And let me cut back to front camera here, close that up. And okay, Kimberly is back. So that is my monthly markings. And excited to show you guys the next week once his nose is done. Are there any questions? For oh yeah, are there any questions? Are Sorry. you using a Q-snap or are you stitching in hand? So for now, I am stitching in hand. I did decide to get a hoop. Uh, I didn't have a hoop that uh, I wouldn't, the little bit I've stitched, I use hoops. I like the um, the one Cheryl uses, which is the tension hoop, but I only have a seven inch one, so that was way too big since I'm doing them individually. Um, but yes, I asked Denise to help me find a hoop that's small enough for them. So we will be getting that because uh, I did try stitching in hand and it worked all right, but I think after a while I felt a little frustrated with myself. So I'm gonna try it with the hoop on his nose and on February. Uh, yeah, is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Did y'all see her shiny pants? Oh, okay. <laughs> Come show. Okay. Look at her shiny. Yeah. They're cute. Look at her shiny pants. They're from Target. I don't think I could ever pull off the shiny pants. Hang yeah, on, I think I have to like. Okay. Do do. They're iridescent. Do do. Woo! Iridescent pants. Yeah, they're they're leggings from Target. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to show you my sampler of the month, and I'm going to talk a little bit about 16 Count Ada and my difficulties with it. So, this is sampler of the month by Country Cottage Needleworks. This is January. This is 16 Count, and it's on beautiful beige. Now, the one thing that I'm struggling with, and I talked to Cheryl about it, is this is my normal 26 count needle right there okay this is my 28 count needle and i keep them in separate out little containers so that i can find the difference okay so you can see the 28 count is a little bit shorter but it is much sharper mm -hmm. So I'm going to kind of show you, I think you're supposed to stitch on the 26 count needle, on 16 count. So this is what this is, right here. When I stitch in hand, I have a really hard time, because it's the needle is a little bit thicker, because the holes are smaller, going from here to here. Because I feel like I'm having to really apply a lot of pressure. So, like going from here to here, it's just taking me forever. So I switched to a 28 count and it's quicker and it's easier because it's lighter, mm. but this is much sharper and it is harder to 
thread. So I can't really decide if I like the 24, no, the 26 or the 28. So this is 26 and this is 28. I think I'm gonna use 28 on the rest, but it's just not as easy as working with 14 count. With 14 count, I can just really stitch fast. So I feel like the 16 count is slowing me down a little bit and I just have to get used to the 28 count if that's what I'm going to go with, but it is much sharper. Um, so you'll poke yourself more. So I have kind of struggled with, now Cheryl uses the 26 on 16 count. So, no, yeah, she uses the size 26, which is this. I just thought it was a little bit fat. So I'm kind of in the middle of not really um, sure what I'm gonna do on February, um, but I think I'm gonna go to the 28 because I need to be able to still go fast and have it look accurate. Um, the other thing that I did that was a little bit different here was I left the windows off. And the reason why is when you're working with Ada, you would stitch from here, which is the middle, to here, which is the middle of an X. But if you had linen, you would already have a hole to go from. So I didn't do it because I didn't want it to not be perfect. So if I was working with linen, I would have put the windows in, but I just didn't, and it's so small. So I left those off, and then on the, it took me an hour and a half to do um, 20 colonial knots. Should not have taken me an hour and a half, but I did it on Friday night, and I was watching 2020, so maybe I was distracted. So what I did do, it was a really good 2020, not sure what I think of it, but the, um, the, um, so what I did was I did the colonial knot. Cheryl taught me how to do it. We have a video on it and I can show you on, um, one of the stitchy talk videos, how to do it. But I did the colonial knot and I try, I did use the size 28 needle to do these and I just moved my needle just a tiny bit up But yes, it did take me an hour and a half to do which it should not have taken that long so But I, I think they came out good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these for get this framed and that's kind of my review on the uh, The 16 count so like in the oh another thing that I did do here one other change is on the pattern Um, sorry, I keep getting the needles out. Right here, there's not a X there on the pattern, just right there. And it just looked funny, so I added an X. So here you can see that it's not there. And I noticed on February it's also not there, so I'm gonna, I added that X. So let me know if you have any questions on that. Now the February, now on this one, each month, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. I'm gonna be doing the top the first week, the middle the second week, the bottom the third week, and then the fourth week, I don't have to work on it. So I will take this to get this framed. Um, I'm gonna take it next week because next week I'm gonna have the next item that I'm gonna show you finished. So I will have two things to take to the framer. So let me know if you have any questions on the needles. I'm not an expert. Like I said, Cheryl uses the size 26 on 16 count. I just was really struggling and so I texted her and said, hey, you know, and she said, no, that's what I use. But I went to the 28 count. It just um, gives you, like it pricks your finger a little bit. Right, we had a super chat from Julie Washburn for $5. And Julie says, when you outline your shape to come back to fill in later, do you do the full X of each stitch of outline or do you just do the first stitch of each square? I do the full X. And I usually go all the way around, half X, go backwards and do the finished X. So that that way, if I have made a mistake along the way, I have half to pull out, not a full amount to pull out. And that's definitely something on Stitchy Talk we will show at some point this year. Um, 
and I'm no expert. I mean, it's, it, there's no, I, I want to say there's no right way and no wrong way to do things. I just do what makes it go faster. From Faith M. Bo, a lot of patterns tell you conversions when using different sizes of fabric counts. I have a pattern that doesn't. The sample is stitched on 32 count linen. I want to stitch on 18 to 20 count Ada. How do I figure out what size to cut or purchase my Ada? So you do the same thing. You write out. <laughs> okay, sorry, that was funny. Okay, so you do the same thing. You would, what count did she say? 32. So 32 divided by 2 is 16. So she, you would take 98 divided by 16 and 112 divided by 16. Write that number down as your stitch size. And then you would add 6 inches all the way around. And that's how you would come up with it. So it's kind of one of those things where if you write it down, it really helps you. Because I get, if I didn't write it down, I would be confused. I would forget my number by the time I got to the cutting table. And I would cut the wrong size. Um, but say you're converting from the 16 to 18 or 20. How would you do that? You would just, instead of dividing by 16, you would divide by 18. Or you would okay. divide by 20. So you, but you're always starting with the stitch count that's in the pattern. And of course, I do sometimes check that stitch count to make sure that they have the stitch count correct. Just so that there's no mistake when I cut my fabric. I kind of triple check myself during that stitch, you know, the stitch count. And that's why I really like this. Now, you don't have to have this. You could just write it on a piece of paper. From Maria Elena Bleca, is there a chart that tells all the fabrics, what all the fabrics are in the count? Like, I don't know what Monaco is. That would be like 14 or 11 Ada. So is there a chart? There's not really a chart because every manufacturer is different. So each manufacturer just makes whatever they want. They make 14, 28, 32, 26. It just depends what they make. So there isn't a chart and you just kind of have to find which brand you like and then search within that brand. And we're always open to adding any kind of color. So if there's like a color you're looking for that we don't carry, you can let us know and we can stock it as soon as we can get it. Is that the right answer, Denise? That or like Monaco, is that always an even weave? That's always going to come in 28. Like that's not going to come in a 14 count. Okay, so Monaco is kind of its own thing. It's made by DMC, and Monaco is like the even weave. The even weave. And they only make Monaco in 28 count, and they make white, off white, and they used to make black. They no longer make black and they no longer sell it by the bolt at Joann's. Like that's how Priscilla and Chelsea would do it because it would save money and then they just dye it as they go. Um, but they sell it in like fat quarter kind of pieces and we sell that on our website and we sell everything Monaco that's available now that we can get from DMC. They just have made some changes, but, but um, Priscilla and Chelsea just went and bought everything when they found out they were making that change. So they have plenty of Monaco to last them. And by stitching on fabric that is much less expensive, they can put their money in floss or charts or something else. So when you're on, um, you just kind of have to figure out how you want to do it in your head. But that, that thing, yeah, Monaco only comes 28 is what Denise is telling me. I've never used Monaco, so I don't know. Sorry. I was like, I don't think I answered that right. Yeah. I think that's okay. Uh, Annie Billodeau says, can you explain why sometimes you stitch the inside of the house first, meaning the door windows first? Is it to make the stitches look better? No. I think it's to make your fill-in go faster. Oh, to make my fill-in go faster. Um, I usually, when I'm stitching, okay, so I'll show you this. This might help. So when I did this, I did my white first. So I did the white rim first, then I did the green, and then I did the dark blue, the dark brown, because I didn't want the brown to bleed into the other colors. And then I did the outline of the house all the way around. Then I did all the whites, and then I filled in the green and then filled in the blue. Does that so I kind of do what I, I do start with the lightest color and then I try to do fill in when I can. 
and I'll do a lot of that kind of stuff throughout the year on Stitchy Talk. I'll try to think of um, like just different things to do. Uh, and Lori Holt had said she has her 10 count Ada vintage cloth and color blackboard, which is a true black for people looking for a true black. Oh, that's black. true. It's not, it's a, it's the tin count. Yes. So that would be very similar to what I showed you on the pillow. And that would look very farmhousey if you did, um, if you did that. And Stella Napier says, Lori's 10 count Ada is super soft. Is the 14 count the soft? Thanks. No, it's not. And it's because it's a tighter weave. It's, it's more of a stiffer Ada which is what I prefer. It's um, the, and I kind of feel like the tinier you go on Ada, the stiffer it gets. So I feel like the 16 count in the same exact brand is stiffer than the 14 count in the same exact brand, which is why I was having trouble turning the needle through, like, cause it's just like, there's not as much room. And I was, yeah, is that, am I answering it right? Okay. And Kimberly M. Honeybee was wondering where I got the pink tape that I used to um, oh. secure my stitching. Uh, it's painter's tape, and we can we do have an Amazon link for that, so we can share that. Yeah, and you can tape. get that, like, Amazon. You could get it at Home Depot. Store, I don't Home know Depot. if you could get it at Target. I don't think they have it at Target, but I think they have it at, I know they have it at Home Depot. I don't think they have, like, fun colors at Target. I think they just have, like, the blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know at Home Depot they have a really cute... Uh, aqua <laughs> i do know that all right uh judy guest says looking for months of the year that have a color pattern any suggestions so months of the year we have one we're going to show at the end there are lots of months of the year there is the country cottage needleworks which we showed you earlier she has two she has the one that we did that's framed and then she has this one little house needleworks has the sampler of the month that cheryl had and Pine Mountain has some typography um, designs that are really cute that um, I can show you. It's at the end of the, it's in the, I would grab it, but it's in the very bottom. Um, but there's lots of monthly cross stitch items out there. Pamela Rainey says, can you talk about your cross stitch fabric clubs? I just learned about them recently and signed up to have some on hand when I want to start a new project. Yes, so we have the Witchell club and that comes either 14 count ada or 14 count linen we have spots in both and we do um, colors that are similar to this that are more of a brown white cream gray basic colors we also have the fabric flare club that is available in 14 count only 14 count but that one is more of fun colors and that is screen printed. It's a little bit softer and it's um, like snow or zigzags, it's, it's different. And then we have, I think those are our only two fabric clubs mm -hmm. or three fabric clubs. And we would like to add to that, but right now there is a massive shortage. And when we do a club, we need it to be consistent and we need to be able to have enough colors to do it. So if we only have six colors, that's not gonna work because we're gonna be going like the first 12 months and then 24 months and 36 months. So you just like keep going and people don't wanna get duplicates, so. From Janet Catlick, anyone please do you stitch two over two on 25 count, 28, 30, and 32? Okay, so I stitch two over two on 14 count. Okay, so Denise is helping me today. There's a lot of questions, guys. I think y'all have been asking so many questions. I'm so confused. Okay, so two over two means two strands. The first number means two strands. Over two means you stitch over two. So you would stitch over two on 28 count. On 14 count, you would stitch over one. I use two strands on 14 count and 16 count and 18 count. The other ones we're going to read out loud and okay. hope Denise knows. So 25. That is two strands over two. Okay. 30. I don't know. We've never done it. Denise and I have never done it, but I would try two over two. Mm -hmm. And 32. No idea. Two over two. I think it's two over two. 40 count I know is one over one. Yeah. I think we should get smaller than that. Probably. Yeah. Cheryl's better. So Cheryl can, um, actually, 
Um, Ashley can email Denise. I mean, Ashley can email Cheryl, and Cheryl can answer because she knows. Okay. Because we don't, we're not like experts in that. The next item that I'm working on, and it's going to be finished this week. I'm so excited. Is the Let's Talk winner. And this is by Hands On Design, and she had an autumn one, and this is the winter one, and I'm gonna do all four. So I've done the first one, and this is this one. I divided it up into four sections, and all I have left is down here, and the little Smyrna's. So the Smyrna's are in gray, and they're here. And we have a video on how to do the Smyrna's that Cheryl did. So all I have left is right here, the cozy quilts and the, um, the little quilts down here and the Smyrna's. Now this week I did get a little bit ahead and I'll tell you why. I was at dance and I was working down here and I was kind of going this way, but I got, um, it's really kind of hard in the car to go backwards. And then I was confused I was gonna get all off. So when I was at dance, I was like, you know what? It's a lot easier to stitch down. So I did this in 30 minutes while she was in, in um, the studio. Um, Cause, so I'm super excited. I just have a little bit left, um, but doing, sorry. Doing that was much easier than going backwards. And I love this one. And I got that first one, the autumn one, framed. And it's just a simple white frame. It's a little bit different than this. But I'm going to use that same frame on all four. And then they will all match. So I'm very excited. This is 14 count chalkboard black I use the call for a DMC and you can see that I divided it up into four parts it's going to be about eight by nine and a half now I think her pattern might have called for 16 count let me look she might have she might have done her sample on 16 count I'm going to look real quick and tell you she stitched on 32 count slate which is by fabrics by Stephanie and that's equivalent to 16 count so Mine is going to be bigger than hers. And you can see this black fabric is blacker. And that's fabric by Stephanie Color Slate. Another thing to answer the question about the number of strands is on our cross stitch key. We have um, the number of strands to use and the needle size. So 10 count, you would use four strands. Now, of course, this is just a reference guide. I use six on my pillow for that chunky look because you don't have to follow the rules. You can do whatever you want. 14 to 32 count, we recommend two strands. And 36 to 40 count, we recommend one strand. And then our needle size is over here. And just like I said, I was struggling with the 26 on the 16 count. So I'm gonna go to 28 because you can. This is just a guide and you should do whatever you like at home. And don't be afraid to ask for advice. I mean, I texted Cheryl and was like, I'm struggling, I can't. What do you recommend, what do you do? And she said, no, I use Pat Carson size 26. But I thought, well, that's not working for me. So I did 28 and it's okay. Like, I don't have to do mine the same way. And throughout the January, I did a combination of 24 and 26. I mean, 26 and 28. And you can't tell the difference, but I was just struggling. So just start here and go from there and see what works for you, for you. It's just a guide. So that is Let's Talk Winter, and I will have that finished next week to show you. And then the week after, I will be taking that to my framer to get it framed, which is super exciting. Because that will be, um, this is my first finish of the year. This will be my second and so excited mm -hmm. to have a bunch of finishes mm -hmm. it's been really um i don't know i feel like i have a lot of really good stuff um and a lot of different things and it's exciting to like actually finish something i guess mm -hmm. uh and ashley said that cheryl said two over two on all those counts that we had talked about okay good yay yay cheryl 
Cheryl's the expert. She does the hard stuff. We do the easy stuff. <laughs> The next item that I started this week, because I had a little bit of time, and this is also so that I could show you fill-in and talk about fill-in. Mm. So this just shipped to our club members. It is trucking along March. Now you can see I skipped February because I'm going to do February during my Be Mine stitch along. And let me find it in my book real quick. So I am using the called for colors that Priscilla and Chelsea gave. I'm using chalkboard black. And I started this just a couple of days ago. This one is pretty easy actually. So I did the top and then I decided on the bottom to go ahead and do all of the bamboo. Now I obviously stopped because I haven't done the whole truck. But what I did is I wanted to do the white so that I can just come in and fill in the tulips, fill in the truck. It will save time. But I do get nervous that I'm going to get off count. So what I do is I started here in the center. I found the center. I went over here, stopped. I made sure this, the, the, this on the edge lined up with this on the edge, wherever it was supposed to on the pattern because I combined the top and the bottom, whereas they have theirs in two pieces, I'm going to do one piece. From there, I went from the center over here, made sure this lined up where it should, and then I wanted to really make sure before I did the truck that these two line up. So I did the green to make sure it all did a complete circle. Now I'm going to do the white in the truck, then I'm going to fill in all the tulips at one time, do the truck all at one time, do the green all at one time. But I do do things like this because what if I went over here and did the whole thing and then went over here and did the whole thing and I was off? I have done that and I do fix it, but I just kind of, this kind of helps me catch myself before I do the whole thing and then realize that I am off. So that is March and um, I've spent, I kind of am dividing it into a couple sections. So this took about three and a half hours and I have this written down somewhere else, how much it took, I don't know. And I am keeping mine in a dot dot goose bag and I am keeping uh, one of the seven inch bitty boards and I just put the glosses I'm using and I do have four needles going on here. <laughs> These are from different projects that I finished. Ooh. So when I finish, I just leave a needle in there. And this is my favorite bag from Denise because it's Ooh. my pug. And he's, it's called Ball Hump Pug. Mm -hmm. Like he's, um, he's yeah, that, it's my little doggy. So I am hoping to have a little bit more of this done next week. I'm not sure um, when I'll have it done done. But that was my whip for the week. And then I have some framed finishes. And so these are items that Priscilla, thankfully, thank you, thank you, thank you, finished for me. And these are items that I finished last week, last year. So the first item is autumn typography. This one, I picked my own colors and we did have a thread pack called the Kimberly's Autumn Typography Thread Pack. And we got these boards in by Riley Blake at the end of 2020. They are called, let's see what they're called. They're called large ruler clipboards. There's also a small version. So I think I mailed both the small and the large to her. I'm not sure exactly what I mailed her, but um, she put it on the board and these are both Riley Blake fabrics. And then she put a little felt sunflower with twill ribbon and I love it. So it is, I love it. So um, this is a Pine Mountain Design chart. I love her charts. And I did this as part of our Stitchtober. So that is one of my first frame finishes. My next one I also did in Stitchtober. It was the September Trucking Along. And Priscilla finished it in this. So pretty. And um, I have Piggy on here, and my Piggy, I stitched him in caramel for the brown and black coffee. 
and Priscilla finished it on a wick, wicker basket and then she put some pumpkins these were the pumpkins from Michael's that they were on like a stick and everybody was buying them like crazy because <laughs> uh, they were you'll see them on all everybody's floss tube so I love this and this is my second one that she's done in a wicker basket so um I'm gonna find something that will hold a wicker basket so that I can display it my last one that she finished is also trucking along and I love it oh my gosh it looks so good so this one you can see is a little bit different size similar but a little bit different and this one I did piggy in a different color so this one I did piggy in caramel and this one I did piggy in tea and biscuits and I think the reason why is when I did this piggy over here in this color, I thought it was too similar to the pumpkin. And you can see this piggy is fatter and this piggy is skinnier. And it's based on the number of stitches the roof, the, the bed of the truck has or whatever, the hood, hood of the truck. So I do change my piggy around and the piggy is free on Priscilla's blog priscilla's 2000.blogspot.com see i thought he just got a tan and was fit from the summer and then you know you go through the winter and he's not as tan and he's a oh little i don't think that much but i do know that piggy <laughs> has gained a lot of weight he is getting Aww. fat and so i gotta I, we, he's on a um he's on a walking diet now because he has gotten really chubby but i love it so i can take it home and put it up now speaking of priscilla she has her Make-A-Wish auction piece, which is right here. And we are auctioning this off. She made this with the free Bloomtopia charity pattern from last year. The auction ends Sunday night, no, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And the bid is currently at 320. Yeah. I was outbid, but thank you so much to Priscilla and um, whoever is bidding so that this money can go directly to Make-A-Wish. And each week we're gonna be showing you a previous finish. And this week it was Quilty Love, which we showed earlier today. So that is our previous finish. And Lily can actually show you, it's behind me. We somehow got that on the screen, sneakily, somehow. Magic. <laughs> Magic, yes. Another thing that we wanted to show you, our club feature for this week is NPI. This is the first shipment of that going out. So in the NPI, you get five skeins and the color is blue and this will be shipping on Friday. Ooh. And we called it Iris Blue. And on the back, we keep um, the numbers. Everything on NPI is numbers and no names. So you can keep these and then you will always know what you have. And you can either keep them together or combine them and each month has a different color. So that is our club feature. Our flash sale feature is Portobello Linen. Is on sale today, only today. And this was featured in Jack's Tree Farm by Little House Needleworks. And so this is on sale just for today. Let me know if there's any questions on any of that, and then I'm going to move into all of our what's new, and we have a lot of what's new today. Sometimes we have a little bit, sometimes we have a lot, today we have a lot, and sorry I'm talking so long today. Uh, Judy Guest was clarifying, they were the ones asking about the months of the year in color. They were asking, or they said, I was looking for a color pattern, but thank you, Lily. So if the pattern is in color, but that's like the months of the year? I don't know what that means. If the, if the chart is printed in color. Thank you. Printed in color. Yes. We do list on our site. It is printed. Okay, so if you go on our site and you click into the pattern at the bottom, it will say chart is printed in color. If it doesn't say that, then that means it's printed in black and white. Okay. Is this one in color? I think so, yeah. Let me look. Okay. Off screen. Yeah. This one's printed in color. Yay. So this one is printed in color. It's brand new by... Pine Mountain Designs, it's called January Typography. It is available in paper and PDF and the inside is in color and she lists uh, DMC colors. And you can see that this, I'll show you, 
She is also a quilt shop, so she carries some of the same things that we carry. Mm. She finished this on the small one, yeah. and then we finished this on the big one. So there's a small and a large, and they are by Buttermilk Basin, and Riley Blake made them, and they are true clipboards. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that that's a great finish over here too. And Freddie Gonzalez says, do you have a tip to help with not getting off count struggling? Um, maybe as you go. That tip with putting the needle where you're supposed to end really helped me. So. Oh, okay, that one. Yeah. Hmm. I think we can cover that in detail. I have a couple of tips and we could cover that in a stitchy talk. Okay. But I do think as you're going to, like, don't just count down, count down, count, you know, find a couple of points to count from mm -hmm. and just double, triple check yourself. And there was a chart last year that I got off on and it was one of the trucking alongs. I think it was August or September. And I kind of just had to, I basically put some motifs in a different spot to make it work. And, it, and so if you get off count, you can make it work. You just have to get a little creative. And I do get off count and it's okay, it happens. Mm -hmm. And it usually happens when I'm tired or I'm distracted. So for the new items, the brand new items that I'm super excited about are these brand new needle cases. And I'm gonna show you how to use them, how I use them. I've been using them about six months because they have been in the building for six months. They were just put on the website because they were mailed in our sew sampler box. And this is what I do is I put three different ones in there. I use Pat Carson. And so on the back, I have labeled 24, 26, and 28 with the Lori Holt stickers. And here are the stickers that Denise just handed me. They're called So Handy Stickers and they also have numbers. So that is what I do and what I've been doing. Now, one of the questions that we got on Facebook was how do you take the needle out? And this is how you take the needle out. You just put your, your nail and you just pick it up. Mm -hmm. So you just put the, the, or you just, you know. And I do leave mine messy. I saw that Lily had hers neat. So I'm going to have to do my neat. I'm going to have to do my neat now that I saw Lily's neat. That's crazy. It's usually the other way. It is usually the other way. <laughs> but now that I saw neat, mine are going to be neat. So I literally just put the, my neat, my nail and I just pick it up. Oh, so. You just pump it up. So if you have long nails, it's going to be a little bit harder. So um, these are the three that we're going to leave at work. So they're gonna go in my little desk drawer right here. And then these are the ones that I have in my bag and I'm gonna show you how messy they are so that I can clean them. Oh, they're not too bad. Look, oh, see that, ooh. <laughs> That's like all the needles though. Yeah, it is. I put yeah. the whole package. So that, that I'm super excited about that. I wanted to let you guys know that our Santa Baby, which is our Stitch Quarterly, is now available as a paper pattern. It will eventually, in six months be a PDF pattern. And I showed you this, I love this. I do think a really good idea would be you could use the floss left over from the January and February sampler of the month and color it and stitch it over here. I just don't have time. This is a new paper pattern that has been out for a while, but Lori Holt stitched hers and so I wanted to be able to have the pattern. So on Lori Holt's floss tube, she'll show you the difference on what she did because she changed some colors. She changed a little bit of the design, but this is a new Pine Mountain pattern. We're gonna have it as paper and PDF. Another thing I wanted to show you is Pine Mountain Designs. Sorry, Waxing Moon Designs we sell her paper patterns and we have gotten requests to sell her PDFs. And when we get that request, we do ask the designers. Some designers say yes, some designers say no. She luckily said yes. So her patterns come kind of like this when you print them out. And so I wanted to let you know that now we have an assortment of waxing moon design patterns as PDFs. So if you're overseas or you're somebody who likes to have those on your computer, we now have those. 
<laughs> I wanted to let you know that today's cup is the Be Mine. And I wanted to show you, this is the PDF, not today's cup, today's ornament. But I wanted to let you know it matches this. So you could do something where you finish this one and then you finish this one and put it on a pedestal and they're right next to each other. So, and you could do all your font in black or all your font in white or do it just like Priscilla and Chelsea did. So I just wanted to let you know this came out this morning. This came out last Friday. Love lives here. And these two that I just showed you are only available as PDF. And I really think I might have to make that too. And then this one, oh my gosh, I about died when she sent it. I love this. So this will be made by me in April, March or April. She used Chelsea's checks on the outside, Priscilla's plaids on the inside, and she used the small cloud vintage trim by Lori Holt to finish hers. And she will put on her pattern the SKU name for this. And it is a reservation and you can pre-order it from us and it will ship to you on a paper pattern next month. And I wanted to let you know we have some other new patterns because it is exciting today. Okay, this is an older Prairie Schooler. And Prairie Schooler had all of these by month, January through December. So Lori had it and Lori made this and she showed it on her floss tube and nobody could find it. So I emailed Hoffman and said, can you please re-release January and May? And so they have released January and we're hoping that they will also release May later in the year. And I don't know which of these Lori's is going to do, but I know that she did do January. And so you can see by the number, it's one of their earlier ones. Mm -hmm. So this just came this week. And we're excited that they reprinted that. Mm -hmm. This is this year's collector heart, collector's heart. And I really like it. And I love the little quilt design. So I might make this one and it does come with the two fabrics, just like last year's did. So this fabric for here and this fabric for here, and it comes with the buttons. So I'm, I might make this one and it's, you know, look for the good. That sounds like something that would go in my house. Mm -hmm. So I might have to make that. Annie's, Annie's B's folk art. This came in yesterday and I thought it was very appropriate for January because a lot of you, um, decorate for January. And this one was, we got a lot of requests for this. This is silver Creek samplers and it's called give greatly. And I think this one's going to be super popular. Um, we got a lot of requests for it. And another Prairie Schooler that they re-released. So Prairie Schooler sold to Hoffman Distributing. And Hoffman has rights to all of their patterns. And so they re-release things from time to time. So this one is an even earlier. And so we just got this. And any Prairie Schooler, we are going to keep the patterns in stock at all times if it is in production from Hoffman. I like the little alphabet. Yeah. So this one, let me look at the year. Let's see if it tells me the year. It doesn't tell me the year. Let me look at the other one. It doesn't tell me the year either. So there we go. So that's what I have this week. I'm happy to answer any questions. Of course, I'll be back next week. Next week, my goals are I'm going to work on Kringles, the Jolly section that I changed Kringles to Jollies. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on part one of Farmhouse Christmas, and I'm doing that as a nine part set. And then I'm going to finish Let's Talk Winter. So those are my three big goals for next week and to work on March trucking along. Since I started that, I got ahead. All right. Ilsa Roja says, is Lori Holt pumpkin for sale a PDF soon? April. 
March or April. Guys, so thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be positive. Have fun stitching, and um, I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.